Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is Christmas Day, December 25th, in the year of our Lord, 2023. And this video is sort of an emergency prayer slash war alert. Uh, the possibility of war breaking out of the Middle East in a much more extensive and serious manner. Um, it just, uh, Israel has apparently, it's likely that Israel has made a decision to extend the war in Lebanon. Uh, the minister of the Department of Defense in Israel, Gallant, has been pushing lightly to extend the war to Lebanon and push Hezbollah north of the, of the Latani River. In other words, seize southern Lebanon. Uh, because Israel um, has settlements in that area that are uh, currently evacuated because of danger of uh, you know, Hezbollah rockets. So uh, what has happened is this, and trying to understand exactly what is going on here, why would they do this? So this is a, uh, a news alert. This is put out by Al Jazeera. It was previously put out by Megatron. Uh, <clears throat> so this confirms what was on a little bit ago in the last hour or so, uh, t uh, or so on Twitter X. Iran state television interrupted its regular news broadcast to announce that Say Saeed Razi Massawi has been killed, describing him as one of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard's most senior advisors in Syria. I believe he's a general, and he's sort of a liaison officer with Hezbollah, along with some of the other resistance forces in Syria. Um, of course, the United States has a military base there that has been under fire be because of the United States' support of Israel and their war to exterminate the Palestinians which is the only possible conclusion you can come to looking at what they're doing. Israel is not engaged in defensive actions in Gaza. They're engaged in genocide. It's just that nobody or few people in high places have the cojones to say what is obvious to everyone else because they're afraid of Israel. Or Israel, the Mossad, has a file on them someplace or their son, or something. What did I hear? I heard earlier today that uh, the, the president of the United States, uh, Mr. Biden, uh, has the record for receiving the most campaign contributions of any member of Congress, because he's been a member of the Senate for like 30-some years, uh, has the record for the most contributions from APAC. Some... $10 million over his career. Well, that's at least what's publicly available. Some politicians have a record of, of doing things, shall we say, off the books, too. So, and in the United States, we do know that when this uh, action in Gaza started, the President of the United States ordered two battle groups to the area. I believe one is in the Mediterranean and the other is... They don't really want to go up in the Persian Gulf, do they? There's there's a two carrier battle groups in the area. I don't know where the second one is. I believe the first one is located somewhat back behind the island of Crete in the Mediterranean, somewhat out of the range of Hezbollah uh, anti-ship missiles. And Hezbollah does have some quite advanced Gokhunt, Russian shore-launched or sea-launched anti-ship missiles, they can definitely reach out and touch a big, fat aircraft carrier. Supersonic. Not their state-of-the-art stuff they've got now, but Hezbollah does have the capability of doing serious damage to ships within, I, don't, I forgot what the range is. It's considerable, several hundred miles, I believe. So they have to stay out of range of those. But the United States is in the area. Uh, carrier battle groups are obsolete. They're just sitting targets for modern weapons. 
uh, as as we've seen down in the Mediterranean with the uh, the Red Sea at the bottom of the Red Sea with uh, uh, the Houthis, uh, uh, Yemen, the de facto government at Yemen uh, using small drones and some larger ones to uh, to harass ships. They haven't and and take one captive. They took one oil tanker, I believe, captive. Uh, the United States was going to launch what do they call it? Operation Prosperity, Prosperity Guardian until that all fell apart. <laughs> and apparently somebody decided, we don't really want to go in there because we're going to get hurt. And you can't really, uh, aircraft battle groups can't really do much to people like the Houthis. Uh, but they can do something to you. Just like in, we, you know, we lost the war in Afghanistan. The so-called goat herders won, didn't they? Just like they, they sort of beat the Soviets before that, too. Afghan is known as the country empires go to die. And we know how that ended with the Biden bug out. I remember the, the Vietnamese bug out. That happened when I was in the Air Force. Anyway, I just had gotten in, too. Uh, that's the situation right now. It probably is something to pray about because this could go. Israel does have nuclear weapons. They don't admit it, but everybody knows they have nuclear weapons, including the United States. Uh, probably several hundred. I believe it was Benunu who spilled the beans on those, uh, and he's locked up someplace. But he reported, I remember he reported that back in the 1980s that uh, Israel was mass producing neutron, neutron bombs. Now, a neutron bomb is a th thermonuclear weapon that has a relatively small blast. Um, you could call it like a tactical nuclear weapon, but, uh, you know, less than 10 kilotons. So about the size of the Hiroshima bomb, you know, or smaller. They, they can dial them down pretty small. But what it does have is an enhanced radiation effect. So it gives off a huge amount of neutron radiation. And the purpose of a neutron bomb is to reduce the, uh, the fallout and the, the physical damage, but to kill people, to kill people. The United States was working on them once upon a time in order to stop a massed Soviet tank assault across uh, the Falda Gap. Uh, to stop the tanks by what it would do would just kill, kill the tank crew. The, new, the high energy neutrons would go right through the steel armor and kill the crew very quickly. So that was the idea. But they're relatively simple to make. How do I know that? I looked it up yesterday. I said, yeah, no problem. Anybody can make them. Uh, who else has had them? Uh, North Korea probably has them. Uh, Israel definitely has them. Um, some other countries have played around with them. Nobody's deployed them as far as we know. The United States there did have some that were part of anti-ballistic missile systems. The neutron radiation would, would damage the, uh, the incoming warheads internally and make them not function properly. So that uh, partial fission would take place and the weapon would fail. So that was, uh, assuming you set one of the things off close enough, uh, lovely, all these nuclear, nuclear explosions going off over our heads. But uh, we don't have those anymore. Anyway, this, uh, this is a real possibility. Israel has shown no restraint in what they do. And they even one politician, if you remember, uh, in fact, he was disciplined for it, uh, was broaching the idea of saying Israel should use nukes on Gaza. It would take more than one. I looked at looked at their blast radius, and yeah, it would take some pretty good size. They would use neutron weapons, maybe a half dozen, on Gaza, if they were going to do that. Kill a lot of people quickly, and of course, at the as it is, the entire world, other than the United States, leadership is against them as it is. So I don't know what's going on there, 
they almost have an apocalyptic mindset where it's the uh, the final war between good and evil or something like that. Um, like some of the Dead Sea Scrolls talk about. But they're just, they've gone completely nuts. They, they have a, there's an attitude baked in to the Israelis and it's becoming more and more clear that everybody other than Jews are not quite fully human. And it sent, uh, because of that, disposable. And I, I got a, a good shot of that attitude when I was over there. Uh, and Christians are no different than Muslims as far as they are concerned. In fact, I think they, they hate Christians more. Uh, they definitely hate Christ more than they hate Muhammad. Um, if you look in the Talmud, but I, uh, I got in a rather warm discussion with a, a rabbi when I was over there in 1985. And he told me, he got a little upset with me and told me when the Messiah comes, they're going to put everybody like me to the sword. That was rather startling. But we're seeing that that's not an exception. That's what they're doing in Gaza. They're killing as many people as they can, as many civilians as they can. And they're allowed to do that because the United States government is in full partnership with the genocide. We are literally supplying them the bombs they need in real time to kill like 1,500 people or more a day. The, the current count is over 20,000 civilians, and that doesn't count the ones that are buried under all the rubble. You could probably add another 10,000 onto that count without being too wild. And, of course, there's somewhere around 2 million people in the Gaza Strip, at least a million and a half. I've heard estimates of 2.5 million. They have been a rather fast-growing population there. Uh, so that is the situation today. Merry Christmas. God is greater than these people. And God, Christ promised us that, that I uh, said, if those days were not cut short, the end days, that no flesh would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days, God's chosen people, those days shall be cut short. In other words, Christ will come back because he must come back. Otherwise, there would be no human survivors on the planet. So we can count on God's intervention, on Christ's intervention. Nevertheless, we need to ask, we need to ask for him to put the brakes on the madness. So lots of people are going to die needlessly, needlessly. There's madmen loose in the world, and a lot of them today are in Israel and in Europe and the United States and in Ukraine. The West has gone off the trolley.